This is an H-bridge that allows us to drive a motor bi-directionally. And you can see it consists of four switches and four diodes, four flyback diodes. And let's take a look at how they work to allow us to run the motor in either direction. So because there's four switches, there's 16 or two to the four different states that this H-bridge can be in, but not all of them are relevant. So let's look at a few where these are the closed switches. Let's say that S1 and S4 are closed, and all the others are open. The other two are open. In that case, if this switch is closed, this switch is closed, current will flow from the positive voltage supply down through the switch, through the motor, down through the other switch, and to ground. And I'm going to call that forward motion of the motor. On the other hand, if I have S3 and S2 closed, then that's reverse motion. The current's going to flow here, through there, and down through this switch to ground. And if I have S1 and S3 closed, or S2 and S4, so if we have S1 and S3 closed, then both sides of the motor are seeing the same voltage. So this is uh, what we call brake mode, or dynamic braking. And by forcing the voltage across the motor to be zero, uh, we're essentially slowing it down. We're using short circuit damping to slow down the motor. So it doesn't matter if we connect both sides to positive V or both sides to ground. Uh, we're still going to have zero voltage across the motor. And uh, apart from that is, if we have one or none of the switches closed, then we have coast or freewheeling. So we're letting the voltage across the motor be whatever it wants to be, but we're not providing any current to cause it to spin. So these are the, the uh, valid open and closing of the switches. If we tried some other ones, like for instance, if we closed S3 and S4 simultaneously, that would obviously be bad because it would be a short circuit from positive V to ground. So these are the ones that we'll care about. Now you can build a, an H-bridge like this using four MOSFETs, for example, and four Schottky diodes on your own out of discrete components. But typically what you're going to do is you're going to buy an integrated circuit that already builds all of this in. And that integrated circuit is going to give you two outputs Let's call it out one and out two. And then your PWM signal and any other digital logic that you give to it will just control whether out one and out two are high, low, or turned off, or, short, or shorted to each other. So the logic table for a typical H-bridge would look something like this. You could have both be off, or sometimes called high impedance, and that means the, the outputs are basically disconnected from the motor, and that's going to give you the coast state for the motor. You could have out one be high and out two be low, and that would be forward motion. You could have out one be low, out two be high, and that would be reverse. Or you could have them be shorted to each other, either both high or both low, and that would be the brake state. Many H-bridges will come with the diodes already built into them, so you have the internal flyback protection. Sometimes H-bridges will come with their outputs here, so it actually is requiring you to have your own external diodes.